Hi, my name is Brian and today I'm going to talk about how to use a PVC fitting in place of a bulkhead on an acrylic aquarium. I have a couple of aquariums here. First is my 350 gallon display tank. Unfortunately my glass sump cracked so I had to build a new sump. This is my new sump. Um, I don't know what the exact gallon capacity is. This is two feet by two feet by three feet and it has a working design depth of about 16 inches so it's probably in the neighborhood of a 75 gallon sump and in order to provide a durable leak proof tank at a minimal cost I'm going to use PVC fittings that you would commonly buy at a hardware store in place of bulkhead adapters. I have this test panel that I made up over six months ago um, again, I've had this concept and design in production for over six months. This was my original test panel. It took a half inch piece of acrylic and I bonded a two inch and a one inch fitting into it using weld on 16 and weld on number three or weld on number four. Weld on number four is a fast setting water consistency adhesive. Weld on number 16 is a thicker adhesive. IPS is the company that makes weld-on cements and they said that PVC and acrylic can be bonded using weld-on number 16. There's also a cement called weld-on number 42 which is a two-part acrylic polymer cement. Um, honestly it's probably beyond the reach of most hobbyists. It's expensive, it's difficult to work with, and it has a short working life. So. What I would recommend is if you are interested in using this technique, use weld on number 16. Weld on 16 is a thicker cement that has about a three to five minute working life and then it hardens over the course of about a day. The key to this is you need to have a good clean PVC fitting and you need to have a drill that fits it exactly. So this is probably difficult to see but you need to find a drill that fits as closely as possible. One of the things that I do with these fittings is I use a threaded end and a slip end. I use slip inside the tank and thread it outside the tank. This gives me the ability to remove the plumbing from the tank if I need to in the future. I recommend that. Now, I've also got a dry erase marker, which I'll use to record where I want my holes. So, we'll start with that. Um, first holes I'm going to install are for one inch PVC fittings and these will go to my chiller. So I want them about five inches from the bottom of the tank and about five inches out. Let's put a little X there. So five inches up and five inches out. So those marks are difficult to see on camera. The next thing I'll do is I'll take a piece of sandpaper and I'm going to roughen the surface of the PVC. The purpose of this is to provide a good mechanical bond between the cement and the PVC. It's not necessary to sand off any of the circumference of the PVC. You just want to roughen the surface. I'll be using a electric drill. Again, I'll double check my circumference. Yep, this is good. To minimize stress when I get breakthrough of the pilot point, I'll actually slow the drill down and then I'll slow it down again when I get breakthrough of the final substrate. I'm using um, 18 volt uh, lithium ion batteries and 
running a hole saw is uh, about the limit of what they're good for. They meet 99% of my needs. They're lightweight and they charge quickly, which is why I use them. The next step is to keep a fairly clean work surface by using a shop vac. Always double check which side you've sanded. In my case, I was busy recording the video and didn't realize I'd sanded the threaded end, which is not the end that'll be inserted in. This is a little looser than I would prefer, but it will still work. Easiest way to sand this is to, uh, did it again, is take the PVC fitting in your hand, take the sandpaper, wrap it around and lightly grip it between your hands, and then just spin the fitting. And this will take off the shiny layer and make a bondable surface. And again, I don't like it to slide all the way through. Uh, it's, it's more, um, it's looser than I prefer. So because these holes are a little bit looser than I prefer, I'm actually going to use a piece of tape to hold the fitting in while I glue it. This step I have taped both fittings in. You do want them to protrude a little bit because one of the steps is you turn the tank over and you seal the inside as well. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my number 16 weld on adhesive and just simply introduce it into the crack and it will flow down into here and begin the bonding process. Now, in the event that you made a mistake with this and you cut the hole wrong, um, that's really what a bulkhead fitting is ideal for. What I don't like about bulkhead fittings is A, they're expensive, um, and B, um, they take up a lot of space in terms of the footprint, and uh, C, it's a potential leak point. Rubber seal will eventually fail. So at this point, I've done an initial cement. What I'm going to want to do is let this dry, and I'll come back and add some more cement to this, and I'll gradually build this up. This is a little looser than I prefer. I normally like to see these be a friction fit, and the way you do that is by getting the match between the drill bit and the fitting as close as possible. This one is probably either just right or slightly too big. Um, so I'll probably go ahead and do it because this one has some ridges on it. So that's really all there is to it. Um, like everything else with acrylic, it's mainly a patience game. Okay, I've given these a couple hours to dry and they're ready for a second um, application of Weld on 16. What happens is the Weld on 16 drains down into the gap and then it hardens and, and fills the gap. So what I like to do is give it a good um, two coats. In this particular case, I'll probably do three because these fit a little bit more loosely than I like. Um, they are still, you can see I'm able to actually move the uh, whole tank with them. I wouldn't pick them up. It's not that bonded yet, but uh, you know they're well on their way to being permanently installed. One of the arguments that was used against this by some people on some forums was that the plastics have different rates of expansion and that it would lead to cracking. The person who made those comments is correct. They do have different rates of expansion. However, the difference in the rates of expansion is um, like 0 .003 inches and it's small enough that you probably would have a really hard time measuring it unless you had very good precision tools. So I'll just simply apply a small bead of Weld on 16 and what I'm looking for is a fillet finish and I'll explain what a fillet is in a minute. 
So that's all there is to an additional code. So a fillet, using my model here, is where there is a fill-in and there's not a 90 degree angle here. And you'd have to look closely to see it, but you basically want this filled in. If you see a 90 degree angle in the joint, you don't have enough weld on 16 in here. Um, you know, again, there are other people who may have different beliefs in this. If you don't like this, you don't have to use it. These are the results that work for me, and the reason I'm showing them is to help others who may be interested in doing the same thing. Um, so, right now I'll let this dry for um, an appropriate amount of time. Probably let this dry overnight, and then tomorrow I will rotate the tank. Um, there are probably three more fittings that need to go into this tank. Um, one of the fittings is going to be the inlet, one will be an outlet, um, and then there will be a bypass drain which will be done an inch and a half. And the purpose of the bypass drain is to help me limit the amount of water that um, goes through my refugium, which is what the main section of this will be.